Hi guys, it's Allie, and I passed 100 subscribers on YouTube. In light of passing 100 subscribers on YouTube, I thought it would be fun to make a little bit of a getting to know me tag, something that not just I can use to celebrate this milestone, but something that all of you other booktubers, YouTubers, author tubers out there can use when you pass a milestone, whether it be 100 subscribers or 500 or 50,000 or something like that. So I thought it would be just a fun way to get to know people outside of just booktube and author tube. Just find out some more things about us as people and I hope you guys like my answers and I hope you guys will also do this tag so that I can find out some more about you guys. So let's get started. Number one for this tag is pretty simple. It's just like your basic stats, name, age, where you're from, the kind of stuff that you say on your first day in class at school. And uh, for me, that is that my name is Ali Kidwell. I am 22 years old as of filming this video, and I am from Florida, but I originally uh, was born in and grew up in Virginia. Number two is just to share what kind of filming equipment you use to make your videos and also where you film just kind of in your house, whether you do it in your bedroom or your library or office or something like that. And I am just going to list all of the equipment that I use off to the side or up here somewhere. I haven't decided yet, but um, I'll just list it. And in terms of where I film, currently I'm filming in my Harry Potter room. I did a little bit of a tour of this room a few months back. And uh, other than that, I do sometimes, recently I filmed a couple videos in my room, and that was because that's where my bookshelf is, but usually in here where all of my Harry Potter stuff is. It's thundering. Number three is just to share whether you're in high school, college, slash university, or out of college, or whatever you may be doing right now, if you're in a job, something like that. And for me, I am out of college. I graduated magna cum laude from James Madison University with a uh, degree in English. I also completed the undergraduate pre-professional program in sec secondary education, so teaching. And also I had a minor in teaching English to speakers of other languages, so like teaching ESL classes. Four is, are you a coffee person or a tea person? Um, I personally am a coffee person. I usually have coffee off screen whenever I'm recording a video. Currently, however, I have my trusty Diet Coke off to the side because I needed some, some cold caffeine. Number five is, are you a cat person or a dog person? I am both and I resent anybody who tells me that you can't be both. I have two dogs, an Australian Shepherd Black Lab mix named Penny. I also have a much younger little puppy named Maggie and she is a West Highland White Terrier. You, I've actually, uh, she's been in a video once before for a brief moment. And I also have a cat named Molly and she is a purebred ragdoll cat, which means she's just a big, fuzzy floof that just hates everybody except for after midnight when she will come into your room just so you can pet her for half an hour and then leave and go back to hating you again. Number six is are you an early bird or a night owl? Uh, I am definitely a night owl. <laughs> I have never been very good at waking up early even when I was in college I had a lot of 8 a.m. classes or 9 a.m. classes but, and I was never late to class, but I did, um, I did struggle to go to sleep at like nine o'clock every night, which was crazy for me. Usually I stay up a little bit later because that's just when I'm more creative and more productive is at night. So definitely a night owl. Number seven, what was your favorite class in school? Uh, I didn't specify this, but I mostly mean other than like English or creative writing because I'm assuming a lot of us here on the booktube, authortube community probably enjoyed English class. So other than those, because it was probably creative writing than English, but right under that would have been history and specifically world history in ninth grade was my absolute favorite class of all time in terms of a non-English related class. And I just think history is super cool. So definitely history. 
Number eight is what is your favorite season? My favorite season is definitely fall. I do enjoy summer and winter, but I hate spring. <laughs> and the reason why I hate spring is because I get really bad allergies. But especially in Virginia, fall was the best because it was so pretty seeing all of the leaves change. And just when you're up in the mountains like that, the summers get really hot and the winters get really cold. And I don't like there to be too much on either end. And so I like more temperate weather. And the only seasons with more temperate weather are fall and spring. But spring, I spend the entire time with a cold. So fall is just kind of by default my favorite, but I think it's also the prettiest season, so fall. Number nine is what is your favorite Disney movie slash character? Uh, I created this question just so that I could talk about this, but um, Belle is always and forever will be my favorite Disney princess, but my favorite Disney character of all time, because she's not exactly a princess, is Mulan. She's the absolute best and I will fight you on it. <laughs> Number 10 is who is your favorite superhero along the same vein as the Disney question, especially since Marvel is owned by Disney now. Uh, my favorite superhero has got to be Spider-Man and I know that a lot of people think that's like the basic fave but you can fight me on it because he's the best and um, <laughs> I'm like ready to fight everybody <laughs> answers but uh yeah he's definitely my favorite maybe captain america comes in a close second but um i do tend to like marvel better than dc i think marvel spends more time on character development and that's what i'm all about so probably marvel number 11 is what is the best place you've ever traveled to or where is your favorite place that you've ever traveled to and for me that would have to be south korea in the um Junior year, between junior year and senior year of college, I went on a study abroad trip for four weeks to South Korea. We spent a week in Seoul and then we spent three weeks living in a hostel in um, Daegu. And that's like a bit of a smaller city in Korea. And we spent those three weeks that we were there planning and putting on a two week summer camp for, uh, for English. And what we did there was we were working for a company that is devoted to helping children from North Korean backgrounds kind of assimilate and mingle with South Korean students from, you know, people that might go to their school and things like that. And also, of course, to help them with their English skills. So it was kind of like a sneaky <laughs> opportunity to help um, destigmatize these kids who had North Korean backgrounds and help them get along with um, some of the other kids from their schools as well as you know learning some English which was nice it was fun number 12 what is the geekiest thing that you own so I actually had to go upstairs to find what I thought was the geekiest thing that I own which is kind of ironic considering the fact that I'm sitting in a room full of Harry Potter related items and I still felt the need to leave this room to find something that I consider the geekiest thing I own. So I ended up finding two things, one that is geeky in the traditional sense of it's just really geeky that I have it and also something that I think is just kind of dumb and I think the only reason why I bought it is because I'm shamelessly a geek and that kind of stuff makes me giggle. So the genuinely geeky thing that I have is this which is my TARDIS but not only is it a TARDIS it's a piggy bank. There's a little slot to put coins in here. It has a bunch of coins inside and uh, it used to make a noise. Whenever you put a coin in it would make the little TARDIS coming and going noise and I just think that's hilarious. The other thing that I have that isn't necessarily geeky, I just think it's kind of funny and I wanted to share it with you, is this, which just kind of looks like a misshapen pink banana, <laughs> but it's not. It is in fact, if I just take these things off, it is a banana. <laughs> isn't that so dumb? Like Nyan Cat? Oh god, it's like just, it's a little cat and he's in a little he's in a little pink banana. My little sister has one too that has an actual yellow banana, but I thought this one was the cutest cuz it has the little anime eyes. So, 
I don't know that that's geeky. It's not like I am a fan of the Nyan Cat, like, universe, but uh, I just think this is funny, and it was sitting next to the TARDIS, and so I wanted to include it here. Because isn't that cute? Number 13 is, what is one irrational fear that you have? I created this question, one, because I'm interested, but also because I wanted to share with you that I am still, to this day, scared of the TV show Courage the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> when it came on as a kid, I was just traumatized, I guess? I don't know, but it was so scary to me. And even now, to this day, when I watch any like rerun episodes or like see pictures of Courage, just the art style is so creepy. And some of the stories, the storylines in that show were so like mature for a little kid like I was to be watching. And I guess, even now at 22 years old, it's still too, too spoopy for me. <laughs> Number 14 along the same lines is, do you believe in supernatural beings like ghosts and werewolves and vampires or aliens or extraterrestrial beings? Um, I definitely believe in aliens. I think it's kind of dumb for us to think that in a universe this expansive that we are the only planet that managed to produce life and intelligent life at that and uh, so I don't know that they're you know looking at earth and trying to take over or anything like that but I definitely think they exist somewhere even if we never end up meeting. Number 15 is what is your theme song like what is a song that you feel like kind of defines you or even just one that you really, really like. Uh, bonus points if it's a Broadway song. Um, <laughs> mine would probably have to be Watch What Happens from the Newsies musical. Uh, if you don't know, it's the song where a girl talks about writing. <laughs> and so it's pretty obvious why I chose that one. But her just kind of panic, but also excitement about writing is pretty much like a mood with me <laughs> pretty much exactly the same now she's talking about journalism but uh definitely watch what happens from newsies the musical number 16 is you knew this one was going to be in there what is your hogwarts house so some of you guys know this already but i figured i'd include it for other people um i am originally a ravenclaw that was what i originally got sorted in through the Hogwarts sorting hat thing online, uh, but when they redid the test and told people, hey, you can retake this test now that we've changed it if you want to, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do that, and then whatever I get is officially what I am, and I got Gryffindor, which I'd never gotten before. <laughs> I had never gotten Slytherin, but I had gotten Hufflepuff sometimes, and I would gotten Ravenclaw other times, and so I considered myself a Ravenpuff and then I found out that I'm a Gryffindor, so I guess I'm just everything but Slytherin. Number 17, hardcover, paperback, or ebook slash audible, um, or just any kind of electronic method. Basically, what I'm asking there is what is your preferred reading method? For me, it's all of the above. When it comes to hardcover or paperback, I usually like my hardcover books when I have them to be completely pristine and clean and pretty, and paperbacks, I usually like to keep them in good shape, but with certain books, especially like classics and things like that, I love a kind of beaten up paperback that you can tell has been read a bunch of times with like the cracked spines and the dog-eared pages. I know people are going to come for me for that, but I, I really just like the look of a well-read book. and. Uh, I just think that's cool. In terms of electronic books, I do get a lot of ebooks, a lot of things sent to me. I say on Kindle, but what I really mean is through the Kindle app on my phone and <laughs> laptop. And the reason for that is I'm just impatient. Number 18, give us a YouTube channel that has absolutely nothing to do with writing or books that you like to watch a lot. Uh, I have kind of two or three for this. Um, I do really like binging with Babish in terms of cooking videos. He makes videos where he cooks things that have been mentioned in TV shows and movies and things like that. Uh, he recently did, I think, um, the, the nacho taco, whatever it was, thing from uh, 
from Kim Possible. He did, and he did like a Krabby Patty and things like that. So uh, that's really fun to watch, especially if you like watching cooking videos. I also really like the channel Drawfee, which is a drawing channel um, hosted by College Humor. And I also really like Polygon, just like the whole channel itself. I think they're really funny. <laughs> Number 19, what is a fact about you that was not asked or answered in any of the above questions? So for me, this one, some people might have assumed or guessed from one of my earlier answers, but I have been learning Korean as a language for about two and a half-ish years, maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, I self-taught myself for about like eight months, and then I started taking formal official classes in college, and yeah, I have some kind of personal connections to the Korean language and the Korean culture. Plus, of course, I went to Korea and wanted to be able to communicate with people there. And so, yeah, it's a really um, fun, interesting language to learn and not as hard as you might think just by looking at the characters and stuff like that. It's actually phonetic, which I didn't know until I started learning. But uh, it's a really interesting language and if you have ever felt any kind of inclination to learn a second language that was outside of one of the romantic languages like fr like French or Spanish, uh, I would definitely recommend Korean. It is a very interesting and very fun language to learn. Number 20 is just to share the love. Tag somebody who you know that is either about to or just recently hit a milestone. It could be 100, it could be 500, it could be something else. And just tag them to make this video so that we can all learn more about each other. I am going to tag Alyssa H. Wrights. I, um, I met her through Twitter and then she and I both hit 100 subscribers kind of within a week of each other and she has the same name as me and she makes bookish and authorish videos and so to celebrate her hitting 100 subscribers as well, I am going to tag her to make this video. <laughs> so. I look forward to seeing your video, Alyssa, and I will see the rest of you guys in the next one.